Hi guys, Josh Lloyd here, NBA DraftKings first look for Wednesday, 10 games across the slate. Let's take a look at that first game before we do. Notification bell, give it a ding. Give it a thumbs up, leave your comments down below as well. First game we're looking at is the Portland Trailblazers taking on the Detroit Pistons. In this one, Dennis Smith Jr. is out for Detroit. The Duke, Wayne Ellington, he is doubtful. So some real big opportunities for some guard minutes there. The Blazers are seven-point favorites. The total is 220 and a half. Hamadou Diallo is someone we're going to have to have a look at. They haven't bumped his salary enough. He's at 4,600. He dropped 43 points last game. I really like him here. And I love the fact that on the other side, Damian Lillard is down at 9,500. His recent games haven't been particularly good, averaging just 41 over the last three and 39 over the last five. But down at 9,500, there is value in using Lillard there, I think. Jeremy Grant, bit too inconsistent for me. I'm not all that keen there. While well, Saban Lee is at 4,300, and he should get the vast majority of those point guard minutes. He had 34 last game, so I do think he is an option for us. 6,000 for Robert Covington. Well, his recent form would tell us that that's worthwhile, but it is coming on the back of eight blocks in the last two games. That's really bumping his numbers up, so I'm not 100% convinced in using him here. CJ McCollum's at 8,000. He's playing really well, averaging 46 over the last three games. That looks pretty strong to me. While Norm Powell's at 7,000. Don't want to use him. And Sadiq Bay's at 5,500. Maybe for cash for Sadiq, but not particularly interested in his upside or lack thereof. Next game, Miami taking on the Indiana Pacers. Um, the Victor Oladipo reunion rematch won't occur because he is out of this one. Kendrick Nunn is questionable, while Doug McDermott is questionable, as is Jeremy Lamb on the Pacers side of things. The Heat are one and a half point favorites on the road, and the total is 216. Bam at a bio is 8,200. I do like Bam at that sort of salary. I'm not sure there's tremendous upside, but in saying that, he's averaging 48 across the last five games, so that looks pretty good. And if Kendrick Nunn is out, I am pretty interested in Tyler Hero at 5,400. Hero is averaging 34 points in his last three games. If Nunn plays, it puts a little bit of a cramp on his value. I do like Jim Butler at 8,800, but I think there are better ones out there. Miles Turner, no thank you. While Malcolm Brogdon at 7,000 looks pretty good to me. I love what he did in the last game. He had 46 in that one, while Sabonis at 9,4. The only reason I'd probably fade off of Sabonis here is the Adebayo matchup. It's probably a difficult one for him to get through. Um, Trevor Ariza's at 45. I'd be much more interested in Ariza if he was coming in at, say, 39. He stunk last game, just 11 points in that one at 4,500. While Goran Dragic is at 5,100, uh, no interest there, nor in Timothy John McConnell. Houston and Brooklyn. Next game, the James Harden rematch against his former team. No spread or total at this point. LaMarcus Aldridge won't make his debut. John Wall is questionable with a knee issue. That's not great. And Daniel House and Christian Wood are both probable to play. Um... Nick Claxton at 4,100 with still no LaMarcus Aldridge. Maybe there's a chance. I wouldn't feel super good about it, but I would feel super good about James Harden at 10,900. We know that Harden's going to put up huge numbers. The dude's averaging 73 points over his last three games. Um, and yeah, he's one game against Houston uh, this year already. He dropped 73 in that one. So yeah, look, there's obviously some pretty good uh, value there in him. Kevin Porter's at 6,000 bucks. Struggled in the last one. I think there is some value, especially if John Wall is out. I'd be all about Porter there. Well, Christian Woods at 83 hasn't really been hitting those heights just at this point. Kyrie's at 9,600. I worry about the blowout risk in this one, and that's probably why I'd fade off of Kyrie. While the wild thing, Jay Sean Tate at 5,900. I think that does make a little bit of sense to use Tate there, mainly for cash rather than tournaments. Uh, Kelly Linux at 5,200. That's mainly as a artifact of him starting over Wood the last two games. With Wood back, I don't really see Olenek being that guy. While Blake Griffin at 5,000 and DeAndre Jordan at 4,300, there are much better options, I think, to spend your DraftKings cash than spending that spending them in that direction. Dallas and Boston. Um, Boston are going to maybe have Jalen Brown back. He is questionable in this one. They might also get Romeo Langford ready to make his season debut. Uh, 6,700 for Rob Williams. Tristan Thompson's out again, so Rob Williams is going to be the starting center once more, you would imagine. I think that's there's a risk that's a little bit too high for Williams, but he is averaging 37 over the last three games and 33 over the last five. 
I, I am okay with using him here. Doncic is at 10.7. That's a really nice price for Luca. And then you've got Jalen at 7,900. I'm not interested there. And Porzingis at 79, I am a little bit interested in. Now, some of his recent games have come without Doncic, but still good value in him. And same with Tatum at 8,700, who is actually rolling at the moment, averaging 52 points over his last three games. Kemba Walker is at 6,800. Not interested there, nor with Josh Richardson, nor with Jalen Brown. And Mr. 0 for 10, Evan Fournier, um, no, 6,300. Absolutely no way that I have any interest in Fournier at that price. The Raptors and the Thunder. Um, all right, the Raptors are somehow seven and a half point favorites. I say somehow because they've been struggling, but it is against the Thunder, so that makes sense. 223.5 points is the total in this one. Still no Darius Baisley, Lou Dort, or Shea Gildas Alexander for Oklahoma City. A bloke who's been playing at a not bad level, Joshy Hall, 3,100. That would be one that no one would want to use, really, but, you know. He came in, he put up some good scoring numbers. He's at least someone to marginally consider on the periphery. I like Pokyasevsky at 5,100. I think that looks all right to me. I also like Ty Jerome at 4,500, who played pretty well last game, uh, played more minutes than uh, Teo Maladon in that role. And then Siakam's at 77. Now, Siakam has been probably around that area, but this is a great matchup for him. OG Ananobi's at 63. Love the offensive output for him. His lowest score in his last five games has been 33 points. So I do think that that makes a little bit of sense for OG to be used there. And then you've got Van Vliet, who I'm not super keen on, nor with uh, Kyle Lowry. And Isaiah Roby's at 54. I do like Roby at that price. Um, and then you've got Moses Brown, of course, who struggled a little bit in the last game with just 25 points, but 7,100, I actually do think that he is worth a go. I, I don't believe that Tony Bradley is going to cause any sort of concern with his, uh, with his value. All right, let's go on to the next game now. It is the New York Knicks. They are taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves here in this one. Um, yeah, look, should be a, a win for the Knicks, but in terms of Vegas spread, they're only three and a half point favorites. So that's interesting. The total is 219. Derek Rose has popped up as questionable with uh, a sore ankle. We know Rose has had plenty of problems with those ankles in the past. Well, Josh Okogie has also been upgraded to questionable for the Timberwolves. Rose is at 4,800, and I'd feel okay about using him if he wasn't listed as questionable. While Jaden McDaniels, a guy that's getting a ton of minutes and producing some pretty good numbers at the moment, 39 in the last game and averaging 28 over his last three. He's at 4,300. He works for me. I like uh, Carl Anthony Towns quite a bit at 9,800. We're seeing the ball go through him so much more now. 97 for Julius Randle is probably a little bit too high. While Goose Anthony Edwards at 7,000, I think he's probably right um, in terms of where his value lies, even with Malik Beasley back. Rowan Barrett Jr. is a little bit tough to get a handle on. We know he's quite up and down in his value. I wouldn't want to use Rubio or, uh, or Malik Beasley, especially with the way that Beasley has played since returning from his suspension. All right, next game we're looking at is the Utah Jazz taking on the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, news coming out today that Donovan Mitchell will not play in this game for a personal reason. The Jazz are seven and a half point favorites. The total's 230. Grayson Allen is questionable after leaving the last game early. And Justice Winslow, he remains uh, he remains sidelined. So does that mean more minutes for Desmond Bain? Does it mean more minutes for DeAnthony Melton? Well, we don't really know with Taylor Jenkins at this point, but there's some value to be had on the Utah side of things. Now, Jordan Clarkson is going to shoot horribly, almost definitely at the point at this moment, but more opportunities without Mitchell there. He's at 5,500. He works for me. I like Mike Conley a lot against his former team at 5,800 with more ball handling responsibilities with um, Mitchell out. And then you've got... Um, then we've got Rudy Gobert at 8,100, who is a, a pretty interesting guy to take a look at there. Uh, I think that there is a real opportunity for him to drop yeah, big 40 pluses. He's averaging 45 the last three times against uh, Jonas Valanciunas and the uh, and the Grizzlies. Valanciunas at 7,600 is 40 points average against Rudy the last three times, but he's playing at a higher level than that at the moment. I don't mind him. Well, Ja Morant at this stage, with how Morant's playing, he just has to be a flyer, just a GPP sort of guy. That's probably just about it. I don't really see him being a great... Um, a great option there. De'Anthony Melton's at 4,000. He dropped 36 in the last game. The minutes are the big concern. Now, if Allen's out, I'd be way more interested in using, uh, not Allen there, I'd be way more interested in using De'Anthony Melton if we do hear that Grayson Allen is sidelined. And then you've got Joe Ingles at 5,600, who probably does step into the starting lineup in place of Mitchell. And I think that would make a lot of sense to use Ingles at that sort of salary point. Next up, we have the Kings and the Spurs. The Spurs are two and a half point favorites here um, at, at home taking on the Kings. They got beaten pretty comfortably by Sacramento last time out. The Spurs, two and a half point favorites, as I said. 
Um, Keldon Johnson's at 5,000 because he's really struggling. Uh, I have no interest in using him at this point. I do like using DeJounte Murray here, though, at 7,000. And then Darren Fox, who's just rolling. He's averaging 53 over the last five. And at 9,300, I'm okay with using Darren Fox in this one. DeMar DeRozan's at 76. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Derek White at 57, probably just cash rather than tournament, while Bud Heald's at 63, not interested in that. And Halliburton's at 61. I think it's okay, but I'm not particularly into it. I am into Rashawn Holmes at 7,500, who dropped 52 on the Spurs in the last game, while Pirtle had uh, 40 back on Holmes' head, and he's at 5,800. So I think Big Yak can be an option for us here in this one too. The next one is the Bucks and the Lakers. Um, let's go on to uh, that one. Yep, that's it. Um, all right, we have got the spread is the Bucks eight and a half points, and the total is 222. Andre Drummond will be making his Lakers debut and starting. Yanni's at 10,500 in this one. I like it. I think, I don't know how the hell they're going to stop him. I also like Dennis Schroeder at 7,100. A good opportunity for him to rack up some good numbers. Holiday's at 7,100. Um, Really big game from him against the Clippers. I'm not sure that I fully trust it, but a really big game there. Well, Drummond not listed yet, so you can't use him, unfortunately. Kuzma's at 73. I do think he takes away, uh, Drummond takes away from Kuzma, so I'm not super into it. Middleton's not producing at the level he needs to. While with Drummond around, you don't want to use Montrez Harrell at 7,200. That could be pretty ugly, I think, if you went that direction. Um, yeah, that, that Drummond one and the fact that he's not available to use makes it tough because uh, it reduces the value of so many other players without providing value of having him there. Let's go on to the next one. It is the Bulls and the Suns. DeAndre Ayton's at 6,600. It is a back-to-back -back for Phoenix, but big men against the Bulls, it tends to be a pretty good recipe for success. So I don't mind using Ayton, but then I also look at Nick Vucevic going up against uh, DeAndre Ayton, and I think that can make a lot of sense as well, especially if Zach Levine doesn't play. Levine is questionable, and Kobe White is also questionable. If those two guys are out, you're going to see a little bit more Troy Brown. You're going to see some more Denzel Valentine. You're going to get more shots for guys like Lowry Markinen in that second unit. Now, Markinen's at 4,800, and I wouldn't hate using him if we do have Kobe White ruled out, just because he's going to get a lot more shots in that situation while Troy Brown is a literal minimum salary player. And we could get a scenario where he has to play 22, 23 minutes with White and um, with White and Levine sideline. So that could work. Uh, not too bad at that $3,000 mark. Devin Booker's at 8,500. I think it's a good matchup for him, despite it being a back-to-back. -back. So he is uh, he's an option for me in this matchup. All right, let's take a look at some plays right across the board now. I'm looking at Jordy Clarkson, Nick Claxton, Pokyshevsky, uh, Mike Conley, Hamadou Diallo, Ty Jerome, Rob Williams, James Harden, Rudy Gobert, Jaden McDaniels, uh, Joe Ingles, DeAndre Ayton, Jonas Valanciunas, Yanni Antetokounmpo, Pascal Siakam, Bam Adebayo, DeJounte Murray, I think come across looking pretty good in this matchup. Guys, that'll do it for me. Don't forget, subscribe, bell, notifications, thumbs ups, comments down below. You can find me at the channel linked in the title and the description at Josh Lloyd Fantasy Basketball. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. See ya.